How you guys doing? You want to do a little quick 30 seconds of what you each do in this space and the perspective that you guys are going to be speaking from. All right. Hey, how's it going? So my name is Tyler. Uh, many of you may know me as NFTs Anonymous on Twitter, or more recently, it's now just Anonymous or Anon's Voice. So I came into the space uh, a little over a year and a half ago, and I was just you know, an NFT trader. Uh, I didn't have any crypto native experience. And I had a fair amount of success with minting projects early on. Uh, it led to being able to have more platform, uh, social media, digital identity. Uh, I transitioned that into some marketing opportunities. I helped launch multiple projects, as well as one of one artists that I met through Clubhouse. And more recently, I am focused on uh, multimedia and uh, more of an activism approach. Uh, definitely see some things with the Web3 space as a whole that I think are areas of opportunity. And I believe that it's kind of us as the early adopters. It's our responsibility to kind of set the example and lead the way. So those are the, that's really my ethos, the type of uh, platform that I'm focusing on for the future. and. Uh, Recently, I actually uh, signed an agreement with Soulrich, which is a multimedia company that is uh, focusing on Web3. Let's go. What did you want to know about me, Alex? I, I feel like everyone here already knows you, man. <laughs> a lot of people do. A lot of people do. Just but a quick... Yeah. What's popping? So, um, perspective I operate from. I worked in corporate America and small businesses for 26 years of my life as a business strategist. I was able to successfully transition that into my own business for myself when I first started learning about cryptocurrencies and blockchain technology. I think um, we came up with a good term this morning. Um, I know my banner on Twitter for this event says Web3 Influencer, but now I think uh, I'm gonna embrace the term that was thrown out at me this morning. I'm gonna be a Web3 evangelist. I'm gonna bring the good word about Web3 and blockchain technology to everybody I interact with as often as I can. So that's where I'm coming from. Ooh, I figured that out. I'm doing Web3 and I can't mm -hmm. operate a mic. <laughs> Too much. Um, I'm Corey. I'm, I'm just your um, average woman. Uh, I found, thank you. Thank you so much. Um, I found uh, Web3 through, like most people, through crypto about two and a half years ago. Um, where I was just really, really struggling, um, having lived through, you know, two recessions and just trying to figure out like, what the heck, how does this work? How do people make this work? Um, and figured out that, you know, this, this was the way and became very passionate about it. And like Will just decided that I was going to, uh, be a web three world changer and just tell everybody and their mother about what an opportunity this was and just spread the word because this opportunity um, is such that it is the greatest uh, chance that we have uh, to transfer wealth in that I have known. And um, I just wanted to share that with other people. So that's what I do. I was blessed and privileged to um, get with a company out of San Diego called Cryptonaires that is a crypto uh, education company and become a data research analyst for them. And, and now I just go around talking about Web3. <laughs> Sweet. What's going on, y'all? Nice to meet you guys. My name is Sammy Ariaga. Um, I'm a singer-songwriter based in Nashville. Um, I'm originally from Miami, Florida. My whole family is from the island of Cuba. Yo soy Latino. Any Latinos in the house? Epa, le que rico, cubanito. So I'm like super Cuban at heart, but living in Nashville for 12 years, uh, it's kind of <laughs> prevented me from being the Cuban that I really am. <laughs> as you as you guys know, it's very South and uh, you got to wear your boots and you got to wear your cowboy hat, you know. But uh, I moved to Nashville in 2011 to pursue country music because I felt like there was a huge void 
for uh, the Hispanic market in country music. There's not a lot of artists currently representing our culture in the genre. And so I moved to Nashville to pursue that. And uh, it's, it, it was tough. It was very tough because, the, you know, it's their way or the highway. You know what I'm saying? So um, unless something on TikTok goes viral, they ain't letting you in. That's just that's just the way it is, you know. So uh, after years of just constantly, you know, trying my best and doing the whole social media thing, I got a deal with Sony Music in 2015. That was short lived because I didn't like the way they handled my project and they didn't understand my vision. Um, and I unleashed the Cuban and they let me go. Uh, they couldn't handle it. So thank God they let me go. They could have just shelved me, but they didn't. They let me go. Um, so I've been independent since 2017. Been uh, just dropping songs on Spotify. Um, I, you know, today we have about over 30 million independent music streams on Spotify and Apple Music, which is pretty dope. Um, very blessed to be in the position I'm in. And uh, one of my best friends from back home who I used to do music with, um, he graced me with the Web3 uh, seed last October. And uh, he's like, man, your your following is such a, you know, they're, they're very cult-like. They're very, you know, they love you. Like, they're there for you all the time. And I think Web3 and, like, your fan base would be, like, a no-brainer, you know? Um, so me being the obsessive person that I am, I dove in headfirst into Web3. And, uh, you know, in about six months, it took me about four to five months to, like, really understand the space and, you know, start actually pushing my music through the blockchain and web three. Um, I dropped my first music NFT collection in February. Um, it was a collection of 1500 music NFTs. Uh, we sold a thousand units in under 48 hours. Um, and we sold the other 500 in a little bit over two weeks. Um, very, very, pr thank you so much. Appreciate that. Um, just from an independent artist's point of view, I mean, that's just, uh, it's very humbling to be able to find a community that just, wants to invest in me and in, you know, in this vision that I've been putting together over so many years. And the fact that now my, my fan is not just a consumer, but now they're an investor in what I do. As I grow, they grow with me. It's kind of like a rebirth. Like I, I'm almost starting music all over again. And so, uh, yeah, that's me. I'm Sammy. And I'll just stop yapping because I'll just keep going. <laughs> Hi. Hey, everyone. I'm Lauren Mitchell, uh, Earth Daddy on Twitter. Hit me up. Um, I'm pretty new to this scene of like NFT Twitter and the community that we've all created around it, but I'm not new to crypto. I've been in it for a while, but we were all on Reddit and doing our thing back in the day. So I'm like, now I'm kind of jumping into more of the community side on Twitter and seeing all the trends. Um, and that's been an interesting process for me. I came to the space from Web2, like e-commerce. That was my deal. Has been full-time for the last five years. Um, creating my own stores, running my own stores, building my own team, hiring employees. Um, and so from that world, what I really recognized coming into Web3 was, wow, marketing is a little bit uh, messed up. Like in Web2, it's all about kind of manipulating people and kind of telling them like, this is these are your insecurities and this is what you need to buy in order to overcome your insecurities. <laughs> and I think like when I was in Web2, I didn't really realize how messed up that was. <laughs> and in Web3, it's all about really building with each other and we can get to the top by working alongside of each other instead of kind of stepping on each other to get where we want to be and calling out insecurities and, and all of that. So that's been very encouraging to me. So that's kind of what brought me into the Web3 space was this idea of like, oh, I can do marketing differently. I don't have to rely so much on kind of these old um, marketing tactics that really ran business in that world. Um, but when I got to Web3, I was a little disappointed. I'm not going to be honest <laughs> because I came into the space and I've kind of been understanding that like influencers run the show. Influencers are kind of screwing over normal people right now. And there's a lot of dumping going on on the like on normal humans, right? That are just in the space, like trying to figure out what in the world is going on, and they're kind of getting screwed over. Um, and so I'm I'm a little bit of an activist at heart, so I took a stand and started being very vocal on Twitter. Um, and so we started like the Save Web Three movement, really about like exposing these influencer pump and dumps, a bot fronted pump and dumps. And let me tell you guys, we've been enemy number one on Twitter now for the past 
two weeks since calling out this stuff. It's been like crazy. People are out for us. But I, I genuinely believe that when you mobilize a bunch of normal people, uh, you can you can actually have a say. And we're responsible for moving the culture forward and for actually claiming that vision that we all had coming from Web2. Like we have a vision of a better future and a vision where we all rise together. So so for me, like I, I don't really care so much about um, some of the hate that we're getting in this culture. I'm really here for responsible influencing. So that's a topic that I want to discuss more. I also want to discuss the mental health stuff of, of how people are being affected, kind of like specifically within like the NFT Twitter realm that kind of seems appears to be running the show. Um, so I'm excited to be here. Wonderful. Now that you guys know we have a bunch of amazing humans on this panel, we're going to start by defining the problem here. So mental health, we, we see a lot of issues in the space. Like I personally had a, a friend a couple of weeks ago who got rugged and just like went out into his shed and just broke a bunch of rakes. So there's definitely some uh, there's there's definitely some work to do on on mental health and self care in the space. So where where do we start? What are what are some of the problems that that need fixing? Open discussion. Anybody can start. Open discussion. Anyone can just go off. I'll go first if you don't mind. Um. And I know that doesn't surprise a lot of you in the audience because I like to insert myself in conversations where I see that I add value. I think, well, I don't think, I know. It starts with teaching people how to emotionally detach themselves from their finances. I work uh, in my Web2 world a lot in the financial space. and. That was one of the first lessons I was taught when I first thought I wanted to be a day trader. Options, calls, puts, you know, you never want to be naked in the market. You always want to be covered, right? So decentralized finance gives us that opportunity to teach people how to no longer be emotionally attached to their finances. Because the way I look at it from my perspective, the U.S. dollar is no longer money. It's just currency. Let that sink in for a minute. It's no longer money. It's currency. Money, the definition of money means store of value. The U.S. dollar, in my opinion, is no longer a store of value. Cryptocurrencies are a store of value. Um. Yeah, so I, I think that's one problem that causes a lot of mental health meltdowns, to be perfectly frank and honest, in this space or in any financial space for that matter, is the emotional attachment associated with finances. So uh, I'm going to hop in here and I'm going to respectfully counter. I... I, I, I think that there's a fine line when it comes to cryptocurrencies and NFT communities. I believe that NFT communities, that personally, I, I don't know if people should be investing in something that they don't truly believe in, something that they don't want to see build, see be sustainable, see, you know, change people's lives. Um, I, I understand, you know, the 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 kind of like you know the antithesis of that which is cryptocurrency and that it is a store of value you you are looking more at trends and at you know uh that that type of like traditional analysis with with web3 at least for me personally like i said i've been in it for a, a year and a half and I've, I've been in a lot of different communities from their origin including like most notably the board api club and whether it was timing whether it was um, circumstance as far as the world around us. There, there was something very unique about the, the grassroots feel of that organic community at the beginning. Now, sure, there, there's definitely some uh, coordination. There's, uh, there's marketing funnels. I understand that. You know, I've come to realize that over the past year or so uh, that what you see on the surface isn't always what is really happening. However, I did take something away from that. Like I am no longer a part of that community uh, because I do feel its values changed. I do feel the culture of it changed, but that there was something really special about how it made me feel and what it did for my mental health, for my empowerment, for my belief that there were people that I could identify with and, and actually 
connect on an, an emotional level, but also like a philosophical level of, of how we, what, what ideals, what values we all share. And so I think that there is um, value in having emotional attachment to Web3 communities specifically. Let me jump in here too. I, I think a lot of the, uh, the problems <laughs> that have been created in terms of mental health and web three have just been us. It's that, that whole web two leftover stuff that we've kind of taken, you know, money doesn't sleep uh, is one of the ones that we say all the time. I'll sleep when I die, you know, all of those crazy kinds of things and mentalities that have created this kind of, you know, nonstop, we can't ever shut off. Uh, or shut down because, you know, we all going to make it. And that is toxic uh, because we're, we're still human. We're not robots. You know, we, we uh, the machine <laughs> has, this machine, this body has to rest. Uh, we have to uh, create uh, spaces where we don't, you know, teach people that in order to, you know, get wealthy, you just never, never stop. Um, because that's just untrue. So, you know, there's the this running joke that Web3 means you only get three hours of sleep every night, or Web3 means you're up to 3 a.m. every night, and that's simply not true. So we, we need to start, you know, dispelling these myths that we as a community have created and create more one, ones that are helpful that actually support uh, our mental health. I love that. I love that. The co things in culture definitely need to need to change. I, I want to hear from Lauren a little bit on culture, because if some of you who are in deep in NFT Twitter know the toxicity of it, and you've been through Let's quite talk a, about it. <laughs> you've been through I'm quite excited. a bit of the toxicity of yeah. deep NFT culture. Yeah, I, I think that there's a critical difference to be made between NFT Twitter and Web3. <laughs> and we need to talk about that more because right now the two are kind of like one and the same. We think that in order to be big in th Web3, we have to like have a platform on NFT Twitter. And uh, so I think that the first kind of step to, to solving a lot of this is honestly realizing that you can be very successful in Web3 and in blockchain and all of that without Ha being like huge on NFT Twitter. Like that's a very small, like weird little, little place that gets very toxic and strange. You do not have to be big there. Um, I just posted about this the other day. I think that such an, a great example of this is the Jens Croquet Club that just popped off to a 15 floor, 15 ETH floor. No presence on NFT Twitter. Zero. They have like under 7,000 followers. Um, the DGEN community was all crapping all over it. Like they were like, oh, this is going to be nothing. But that community was built off of literally like a, a community that had already existed in real life. Individuals who wanted to learn e-commerce and other forms of passive income. And so these people all supported this NFT project completely off of Twitter. Right. So I love that. I think that that's the place that we need to get to for mainstream adoption to where we kind of take each other out of that like toxic Twitter algorithm world and begin creating things in real life so that our technology is supporting us as people, not the other way around. Not that we are supporting this, this project, but we don't even care about it. We're just here to flip something. Instead, it should be building value that supports us in our real lives. So I think that when, once we make that distinction, that's, that's really going to help. I'm going to hop in real quick on that just because... so. Lauren and I actually represent Save Web 3, that campaign together. And so we've definitely been sharing in some of the disdain, some of the uh, backlash from the NFT Twitter community. Well, a lot of that is because they're realizing that their, their platforms, their identities, which really are just being quote unquote influencers or part of my language, shit posters, as it's called in the crypto or NFT space, that's all they are. And there's a lot of coordination that happens there. And I'm sure there's coordination above that even with the VCs, but that's another topic. But when it comes to the influencer side of Web3, uh, you know, I definitely identify with Lauren. That's why we got into the campaign together is that there's definitely uh, inequalities, there's inconsistencies, and they're purposely being 
clouded and veiled and, and disguised to make it seem like, you know, these people are your friends. These people are, you know, your entertainment. No, in reality, like she said before, they're dumping on you. You are their exit liquidity. And that is not what's going to help introduce more people to this space, to this, you know, grand decentralized movement overall. That's what's scaring them away. That's why everyone thinks that, you know, uh, crypto as a whole and, and especially NFTs are a scam. It's because there are people that are treating it as such. And, and, and that's all they're trying to get out of it is that short term gain. And, you know, they are OK with, quote unquote, influencing others in a very negative fashion. So that that was amazing. That was amazing. Influencers, the, the top influencers definitely need some some moving around in the space. So now I want to take the discussion more of a what are the solutions direction. And I want to start with a quote that Bob Proctor would always tell us in class. And it's, you do not get rich by doing certain things. You get rich by doing things in a certain way. And riches doesn't necessarily mean money. It can be whatever you value, lifestyle, relationships. It could be material wealth. But what is the certain way that Web3 should be should be operating? What is the certain way people should be going about Web3? What is the paradigm that people should be approaching it with and the solutions that should be implemented in order for us to have a wonderful, successful Web3 when we're, we're actually going to wag me? Yeah, I'll start. Go ahead. Thanks for that. Um, I have an acronym and it's, it's, it's breathe. So let everybody just take a really deep breath because we take shallow breaths all day long. Just from the nose and just feel it all the way down to the toes. Doesn't that feel good? Yeah. It's just a natural way to just ground yourself in your body and de-stress. And, you know, when we don't equate technology with our natural physiological rhythms, but we could. You know, what if we decided that we wanted to make Web3 and tech, this technology the most natural, integrative thing in the world? We could do that. So breathe. I got my notes here because it's been a long day. Um, the B is break. You know, take a break. It's very crucial <laughs> to your mental health to take a break. And I know that Web3, we know how quickly things move and we think we're going to miss something. That FOMO, fear of missing out, is a false reality. It just isn't true. If you miss one bus, the next one is coming along. I can assure you that it is. So make sure that you take a break and find balance. That work-life balance is true in Web3 as it is anywhere else. The R is rest. <laughs> you need more than three hours of sleep. You got to get to bed, close those eyelids, stay off of your computer, put away your social media apps, all of that stuff. Just cut, you, cut it off when you need to do that. Make sure you're getting the proper rest and proper sleep. And I know we're building and all of that good stuff, but it, it's very key that we do this. The E is make sure that you're eating. I have gone through <laughs> entire days on my computer online doing something with NFTs or crypto, and I have just forgotten to even feed myself or to nurture and nourish my body. So make sure that you're eating and exercising. And that doesn't mean you have to run a marathon. It could just mean getting up and stretching at least, you know, every half hour if you're going to, you know, have your eyes glued to your computer or whatever it is. The A in breathe is affirm and assess. And the way to do that is asking yourself these key questions. Do I have a good work-life balance? Am I maybe a little bit over the top here? Am I approaching burnout, not waiting until you are burnt out <laughs> to then ask yourself that question? But before it happens, recognizing that it is happening, and the way to do that is to make sure that you are in touch with what's happening with your body. And then the T in breathe is train. Train yourself to recognize when you are approaching burnout so that it doesn't happen and be proactive and very protective of yourself and your energy. The H is hydrate because we forget to just drink water. Uh, very, very important to clear mind, clearing up brain fog, and just you can't even make good financial decisions if you're stressed and in, in, in a mental fog. And then the E is evolving and emoting. Work out what is, is working and what isn't working and evolve, change your routine if you need to do that is very, very key. 
and emoting is finding a community like the bees or a tribe and talking to folks who uh, understand what you're going through. Because sometimes our families don't. They don't know about crypto, Web3, NFTs. So making sure that you have a, commun a community that you can emote to, talk with, is important. So that is my solution. I love that. Yeah, that's amazing. I love that very much. I actually have to apply it. Uh, B R E A T H. <laughs> Good reminder. Um, yeah, I, like I said earlier, I have a very obsessive personality. So when I dove in in October, Twitter Spaces was all I did. I mean, I literally had AirPods in my head like every day, all day. I mean, I'd have to talk to my parents and be like, because I had this somebody talking to me over here and then my parents are, but it was, but it was bad. I mean, but, but I was literally like spending hours and hours with a, with a whole new community of people from all over the world. And, uh, I kind of planted the seed to them that I do music. And so I wouldn't necessarily ask them if I could sing, I would just like hang out and, you know, they would just invite me like, Hey, we're going to take a break to stretch and, you know, drink water. Sammy, do you want to like sing a song? And anytime I had the opportunity to sing, I would just put my phone take my airpod off use the actual phone speaker and like pull out my guitar and legitimately just sing all my songs um and for doing that after six months you know i developed a little you know music community that came through for me during my first drop but you know going back to how to bring back value you know using web3 is uh be an educator be somebody who is not afraid to onboard and is not selfish with the with the alpha you know like I myself with Nashville, I have a little bit of a different <laughs> mentality because being in Nashville for 12 years and being told no for so many years, I'm a little more, uh, like, I guess, protective of who I meet with. Um, but, uh, but I'm not afraid to go to, to coffee and, you know, teach somebody who's passionate about the space because, you know, just that little split 15 minutes that you took to educate them can potentially change their life forever. Um, and as a musician, I truly see Web3 being you know, the destruction of record labels and, you know, like the another chance for the modern day songwriter to retain ownership of their beautiful work and, uh, you know, create their own companies, build their own businesses, have their own teammates and uh, build their own village without being sucked dry. You know, because these labels t literally take 85%. Once you sign to a Sony or a Universal or a Warner, they literally take minimum 85% of everything you ever do for the rest until you recoup. And sometimes these artists never do recoup. So um, the fact that Web3, you know, your, your community is your label. They literally are there feeding you, investing in you. And the more that you grow yourself, the more they grow with you. So um, don't be afraid to educate. That's, what, that's all I got to say. Yeah. So I guess I can definitely speak to, uh, isn't it, it's Color Me Crypto, right? Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay. That's how I know you. Yes. So I can definitely speak to what you were, uh, with your acronym there, Breathe. And similar to Sammy, uh, I really, really need to apply it better myself. Um, probably averaging less than four hours of sleep a night, like legitimately. Uh, I'm on social media at least six to eight hours a day. It's definitely not healthy. It feels like it has purpose and that I, you know, I am doing it because I'm passionate, but there does need to be more balance. There does need to be more time away. Uh, you do have to stay grounded and, and, you know, remember kind of like when you are sucked into that social media vortex, those echo chambers, that's not the real world. I, I actually tweeted that out today that Twitter, uh, you know, uh, what I say, something along the lines that uh, Twitter is not an accurate portrayal of Web3, nor anything else. And I, I'm noticing that, re you know, again, it's creeping up on me more recently. There has been, uh, unfortunately, uh, a lot of violence around the country. And the way that Twitter is choosing to emphasize that is it seems very toxifying. It seems like there is some sort of intent to, to scare and, and to make people fearful. Um, what, you know, whatever that may be, whether it's control or divide or, you know, anything along those lines. Um, it definitely was a reminder that I use that parallel to NFT Twitter and realize that the same type of patterns exist. So 
what I would say as far as the best way to approach Web3 is to get back to basics and find what you love because financial freedom is one thing, but like actually feeling liberated and enjoying your life and, you know, getting the most sense of purpose out of it. That's an entirely uh, different concept altogether. Yeah. We, we need to remember that we're, we can create whatever reality we desire. Like that gut feeling that you have inside of, of your gut that you deserve an amazing life and you deserve the things that you actually want. That, that's the truth. That's the true you. And it's easy to forget that if you don't take time going outside, wa walking in the space. We call it touching grass. And <laughs> go touch some grass. Go spend, spend some time. Yeah, self-care, self-love. It's very important for you to continue creating what it is that, that matters for you. So my, my next question is what are, what are some resources and some tips for people who, um, who could be going through some things mentally in this space? What, what are the places to go? So any certain Twitter spaces? I know uh, Zeneca hosts a Twitter space on Thursdays at 5 o'clock Eastern every day or every, every Thursday, every week. <laughs> um, that's a pretty good one. Uh, any, any other resources? Are you talking like from a digital presence or real life presence? Great outdoors. Let's let's do both. Okay. Uh, digital presence, crypto underscore swarm. We're running a 24-7 Twitter space right now. It's been running for over 22 days. It's always a great resource to come in, talk. Um, if you need help, like professional help, uh, we can help seek out those resources for you. Um, but I think that, or I don't think, I know that having a well-rounded support system that feels like a family is very important to balance these day-to-day -day activities between the digital online world and the IRL or in real life world. Um, from an in real life perspective, if, if you notice that you know, maybe your behavior is a little bit off. Maybe you're a little more snappy. Maybe you don't respond to people that they wait, the way that they expect you to. Um, there are professional resources out there in, in the Web2 world. And so I just encourage anybody that's dealing with anything, that's going through anything, um, seek out those resources. I know that uh, they advertise them all the time on TV. Um, if you're not plugged into TV, you know, I'm sure you can find it on the internet. We're all pretty web surf savvy by now, I'm sure. Um, but that that's would be my um, suggestion. Hello. Um, yeah, I think that the best resources are not going to be found in Web3, to be honest. Like, go outside, for real. Like, um, go spend time with your friends. Make make genuine connections with people in real life. That's very, very important. I feel like that's like hands down the best thing that can happen. And I've honestly, like, I feel like events like these are, are critical for us. Like we have to be in real life. Like I, I joke cause I do have a, a certain level of social anxiety. So events like these kind of scare me. I'd much rather be behind my, my PFP and just kind of talking on Twitter spaces. But I do think that this is incredibly important and we're ho we're hosting Bali NFT week. Uh, we're, we're taking an international vacation just so all of us can reset and, and kind of relax on the beach and hang out and, and create genuine friendships. Because at the end of the day, if you're getting attacked on Twitter or you, you start a project and you fail because you don't have the, the business acumen yet, or you're still learning cer certain things, you need to be able to have like it, friends that you know are in real life friends too, not just friends that'll dip on you because they don't really have any sort of real connection to you in the real world. So I think that in real life events are absolutely critical and, and I'm excited that we've started to use technology now to, to put on in real life events. Like it's what I said earlier, like this technology should support our in real life existence, not the other way around. And I think that that's really like just the critical kind of turning point with, with all of this when we talk about mental health. Um, I'm also going to say to, to make a plan. Um, 
protecting your your mental health, your emotional health, your spiritual self is extremely important, as important or much more so than anything you're doing in any industry. So make a plan to make sure that you are protecting that. Um, and that will include, you know, making time for friends and family. That's going to include getting out into the great outdoors, making sure you're, did I, did I, oh, I don't know. It could be that I'm just, I just don't have it close enough, but yet make a plan that will support you and your mental health. That includes taking healthy breaks. My daughter got married, uh, the first of May, my oldest daughter, um, and I helped to you know, plan the wedding. And if you've ever done that, you guys know that's serious work. Uh, so <laughs> I had to take a break from what I was doing in Web3. I had to make a choice over what was my priority. And I do not regret that. Um, we made some beautiful memories. Uh, we ended up in St. Lucia for her sharing her honeymoon with her. And the whole time I didn't touch my phone. Um, and I cannot tell you how freeing and liberating that was. Yes, the temptation was there because it was just habit, <laughs> but not doing it um, and just having that that time that I was fully present, you know, with my family and my friends meant everything. So make sure that you're you're doing that for yourself. All right. So I'll say this. Um, there's a reason why they invite people like us here. So first, I'm going to give a shout out to Alex and Quantum Society. You want to talk about resources. So. I think that media, media is you know everywhere in our lives, and so it's really important. Like, what media are you, are you identifying with? Are are you uh, engaging with? Right, whether it be with TikTok or or Instagram or Facebook or whatever else. But for most of us here, it's Twitter, and so Twitter Spaces being really a uh, a forum or a medium for being able to have these open conversations with the community, be able to share some sort uh, of message or purpose, or even just finding ways to share like different ideas and experiences with one another. You know, Quantum Society is doing a great job with that. And there is, you know, a, like established curriculum, which I had it before, like I'll say it now, um, they are basically teaching people to un they are helping people unlock to uh, unleash their full potential. And go, <laughs> yeah, and you know, inspired by Bob by Bob Proctor, like there, there's there's something of real substance there, and I feel that most of what is on social media, there's not much substance there. It's just meant, it's just there to distract you, quite honestly. And then, yeah, self plug for a second as far as what we're doing with Soul Rich. So Soul Rich is aligning itself with like top tier entertainment and music industry resources that are fed up. They've had enough of the current system. They agree it's time for us to revolutionize as, you know, a community of people that see just a way for us to be more inclusive and more equitable towards everyone. So our, our, our content is going to focus on those like common interests and we want to find common ground. We want to unify people. We want to inspire people. So basically it's everything that you already see in the media, whether it be sports, music, you know, personal development, market culture, anything of that nature except we're going to come at it with love and we're going to come at it with, you know, uh, just a very different approach than what, you know, many are used to. And I think that that's what Web3 is really all about is being able to craft that identity, that, um, that, that content with your community, as opposed to trying to indoctrinate them with something that is, you know, one person's or one group's agenda. When when people find out the the value inside of themselves and what they're actually capable of, I, I, I believe a byproduct is a lot of self self care and good mental health because they realize the value is not in you know sitting in Twitter and like fi finding something and or chasing something outside of you. The value is created from your internal state, from who you are and w what you practice, and that creates manifests materializes however you want to call it your physical reality that you you do want and thank you tyler for plugging qs we do we uh, we coach people we do we run a daily mindset training give people that refreshment that alignment towards their goals uh, in our in our discord
Sammy, you want to say something? And it's just beautiful. I, I just don't have any words to say, man. I'm just in awe. I mean, there's so much wisdom on this stage right now. Um, I've learned a lot in, in Web3. I mean, uh, being being from Web2 and like, you know, being somebody who does social media and has been through the whole ro mental roller coaster of like seeing comments and like, I had, I was told the, the other day, like <laughs> on an Instagram video of me just promoting one of my songs. I was just singing along to one of my songs. Somebody put narcissist at its finest. And so like, it's things like that that I got to deal with on a daily basis. And then going through Twitter as well. And then Pinterest and TikTok. As a music artist, we got to post on all these platforms. So it's not just one, it's like eight platforms. Um, so it's really, really hard on the mental. And so um, one thing that I like to do is, you know, I recently bought a fresh pair of sneaks and I go to the park and I listen to lo-fi and I just read poems and I, uh, I just find a good book, you know, and I just drift away. You know what I mean? Um, and I love going on night, night drives, put the windows down and just breathe in that country air. If you, if you live in the country, <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, I got, I got my ways of just kind of venting and getting it out. You know what I mean? Um, uh, find that one thing that'll allow you to cope and just get it all out. And, um, uh, yeah, I mean, that's, those are, th that's what I like to do at least. Um, but like she said, like social media definitely ain't the way to go. I would stay away from that and, uh, apply, breathe. <laughs> you, you have to remember their comments are a representation of them and not a representation of you. Correct. I always tell my friends, anybody who has the time to hate on you is because they don't got anything fun in their life to focus on. Absolutely. Anything, you see what I'm saying? Anything like eventful and productive in their life to focus on. So uh, it's like, it's almost a compliment to you. Correct. <laughs> Also, I, I just want to say, like, what of what benefit is it to gain the whole world and lose your soul? You know, like, even if we are going to become rich and famous off of Web3, if you don't have soul, you don't have anything. If you don't have respect and friendship, at the end of the day, you're going to be miserable. And I achieved a lot in the Web2 world at a very young age, and I was miserable. And I'll tell you guys that, like, I was miserable in a relationship sense and in a humanity sense, even though I had everything that I ever wanted. So I think it's really important for us to remember that, that, that without soul, we really don't have anything at the end of the day. So uh, we can hold each other accountable to that. Facts. We are spiritual beings living a human experience, not the other way around. 1,000%, 1,000%. And just something that just resonated with me. Um, it's all about the relationships. I'll tell you, in the last two years, I have developed, fostered, and have embraced more meaningful relationships in this space because everybody is so like-minded than I have ever in my entire life leading up to this point. So that's 49 years of not having as many meaningful relationships as I do now. So I know I'm, I'm mature enough to understand that anything tangible you cannot take with you. The only thing you can take with you are those relationships when you leave this physical realm. This got deep fast, fam. This got, this, got, this got existential up in here, but I'm living you, uh, for it. I love you that. You obviously haven't heard me on Twitter spaces, <laughs> especially at uh, 11 a.m. Eastern. <laughs> Sometimes we go really deep that all right, early. All right, I'm going to be here for it. I want to co-host. <laughs> all right, and, and the, the last question uh, to sum it up, what, what are some, because uh, education is how we're going to get, get over it. Education, raising awareness, that's how we're, we're going to get this message to people and get people taking care of themselves what what are some steps that need to be taken in in that sense <laughs> say it one more time <laughs> what do we need to do from an educational standpoint and from a raising awareness standpoint Yes, so I'm very passionate about this. Um, we need to to educate people that stupid is not cute. 
um i think on nft twitter like we're almost like reveling in our degenness like i made the stupidest play today you know and then it gets like a thousand likes and then like someone who made like actually a decent flip or a decent a decent project gets like no attention so um so i know that it's like easy to slap a like on like stupid um but let, like let's not do that anymore like like let's actually start rewarding creators and like one of one artists who are producing incredible work like share that instead of sharing like the shit posts, right? Um, I'm very passionate about that because I think that this culture of like, oh yeah, this is stupid play, but like I'm down, I'm a degen, is actually like really hurting our culture. Um, and it's the minority. And I think as we have mainstream adoption and we have actual industries and heads of industries that are coming here to, to revolutionize what has no longer been working for us in Web2, they're not gonna be playing around with shit posters. They're here for people that have talent and that who wanna build. And so it's even a benefit to yourself to begin taking yourself seriously. And um, for me, when I first entered the space, like I had a very clear choice as a woman. And I'm like, I'm so passionate about this. I could go on, but I'll keep it short, right? As a woman in the NFT Twitter space, you can play it both ways, right? You can kind of like, you can be serious and have real thoughts on the space, but no one's going to pay you any mind. Or you can just kind of play into the degen culture, objectify yourself, and instantly you'll have like 100,000 followers. All right. So I had like a, a very clear choice to make um, in terms of how I was going to present myself. And for me, I'm here for the long term. I'm here for the next 10, 20 years. Like that's the kind of stuff that I want to create with my team is something that's going to revolutionize how, how we see art and music. Like that's what I'm here for. So I had to make that choice of like, OK, maybe I won't have the clout, but I'm going to be kind of that revolutionary voice. And maybe that'll get some hate. Maybe people will come after me. And that's OK. So I think that we all have to kind of make that choice. How do we want to be perceived? And maybe it won't get the most engagement. But I'm asking you guys like to, to join with me and, and be OK with not getting as much engagement. Because in the long term, you're actually going to be taken very seriously by people who want to put real money into the space. I, I agree with that completely. I just wanted you know, to every just time add I a see, little bit I, to that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I was just going to say, every time I see one of those just pictures of some, like, crypto girl who's clearly not in the crypto just showing her cleavage with, like, 5,000 likes, right. it irks me a little bit. Yeah. Just a little, I mean, it irks me a little more than a little bit. <laughs> As a woman, it really just pisses me off. I don't like to see that at all. But I, I just wanted to, to say, lead by example. I love him. He's, he's my new mic manager. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> yeah, he has a relationship with mics that I clearly do not. Uh, but yeah, leading by example, when people are coming to you talking about how they stayed up all night because they were trying to mint or, you know, I was in, in Discord and they're bragging about it. Like, you know, Lauren said, almost like this, you know, glorification of doing these things that are definitely not supportive of our mental health, you know, lead by example by saying, you know, yeah, get, get that rest. Or, you know, maybe that's not cool. Or maybe there's a different way that you could do that. Or, you know, is that uh, supporting you, supporting your mental, emotional, and spiritual health? And if it's not, maybe you need to think about making a change and then be, you know, the change that you want to see where you're not supporting that kind of talk. You're not, you know, uh, touting those myths that just aren't true. And you're actually, you know, being the balanced person <laughs> that you want uh, to see. And you're being the person in Web3 that you'd like all of us to be. So that's what I want to say. I just had an inspired thought. We're taught all the time. If you're not having a fun, you're not doing it right. So get out there and have some fun. Damn it. Thank you. Um, it wasn't it wasn't a question as much as a comment. And uh, one thing that has actually helped me with my mental health in the space is uh, being able to like ground myself in what my purpose and my dreams actually are. So it's like a lot of people fall in love with like the money aspect of it, but you can have people who are extremely successful or rich, and they. Mm, I'm not even going to use that word. Um, they're, they're just not happy within themselves. And 
uh, when you ground yourself or, or you have like a sturdy foundation, even if you bust your ass, you're, you're on solid ground. Yeah, isn't it? Isn't the point of getting money the the freedom that it that it gets us? Like, there's there's no point in sacrificing your freedom and then getting enslaved by this big energy ball of money that's screwing your life. Yeah, you you just, you just spurred a thought in my mind that just got me thinking in a different direction, but it was a good thought. So thank we you. Can leave that. that one for the next panel. <laughs> <laughs> leave it for the next panel. Thank you so much well, for having thank us. Thank you, everybody. This was the self care mental health panel. <sighs> Have Very an amazing, nice. refreshing rest of your day. And remember, you're unlimited. You're an amazing human. You gotta have fun. Just enjoy yourself and have a wonderful day. Very nice. Thank you, Alex Wagner and his panel.